Hello everybody, it's Dr. Meyer here with a video on species counterpoint, specifically on melody and melodic lines. What is species counterpoint? Species counterpoint is a system for writing multiple melodies at once, although we are just going to focus on single melodies in this video. The word species refers to different kinds of rhythmic relationships between melodies. For example, first species, second species, and so forth, which we will address in a future video. The reason we are studying species counterpoint is because it is an important precursor and underlying mechanism of tonal music. You will discuss the history of species counterpoint more in class. Good counterpoint begins with a good melodic line. We call it a line because it suggests tracing a connection through separated notes. Listen to example one and notice how a smooth line could be traced through the entirety of the example. To show how writing a good underlying line can be important for understanding how tonal music is constructed, listen to example 2, which is a rhythmicized version of example 1. It's important to understand that good underlying lines can make a good melody with rhythm added. To write a good line, it must have flow. Flow is the smooth, varied, and directed motion of a line. While you will discuss more rules in class, here are a few guidelines to get you started, identifying and writing lines with good flow. Your line must have a variety of pitches. It should have a single wave or arch-like contour with few changes of direction. Typically lines with a single apex and mostly stepwise motion have good flow. The last two guidelines are pretty specific and will be discussed more in detail in class, but they are to fill gaps left by large leaps and to prepare leaps by preceding them with motion from the opposite direction and to resolve those leaps with motion in the opposite direction. There are three important motions that make up most flowing lines. The first is passing motion. Passing motion is stepwise motion between two notes. For example, below there is passing motion between the first three notes, C, B, and A, and the last three notes, D, C, and B. All three tones are involved in the passing motion, and the middle tone is called the passing tone. Passing motion occurs between two stable pitches with an active pitch acting as the passing tone. Another type of motion is neighbor motion. Neighbor motion is stepwise motion away from a tone and back again. In our example, we have neighbor motion in the middle of our melody, from A to B and back to A again. Again, all three tones are involved in the neighbor motion. And the center tone, which is B in this case, is called the neighbor tone. Generally, the two outer tones will be stable pitches with an active tone acting as the neighbor tone. A third type of motion is arpeggiation. An arpeggiation is motion by leaps through the tones in a chord, specifically a triad, which can be major or minor. In our example below, the first three tones outline an A minor triad which also happens to be scale degrees 1, 3, and 5 in the key of this example. Arpeggiations can be ascending or descending. They do not have to start on scale degree 1, but can begin on any of the three scale degrees. As long as the arpeggiation goes through all three tones in the triad, it can be considered an arpeggiation. There are two important ideas that need to be emphasized here. These figures, the three that I just discussed, passing in neighbor motions and arpeggiation, are the same figures that elaborate lines into full melodies. As I said at the beginning of the video, a good underlying line makes a good melody. 
Secondly, the lines that you write must have all consonant leaps. This means that there are no augmented or diminished intervals between successive pitches and no leaps of sevenths in your lines. Now it's your turn to practice. Listen to each of the three lines below and see if you can figure out which line has the best flow. Remember, the guidelines for good flow that we discussed at the beginning of the video. Once you've decided which melody is the best, critique the other two on how their flow could be improved. Once you've heard the recordings, you may pause the video to make your evaluations. Here's the melody at the top. Here's the middle melody. And the bottom melody line. Did you choose the middle line as the best? If so, you're right. It's the most flowing because it's mostly stepwise, has a single apex, a variety of pitches, and has a nice contour. The top melody has many leaps. It has a leap of an augmented fourth and a non-triadic arpeggiation. The bottom melody is too repetitive has a jagged or complex melodic contour, and a narrow melodic range. If you happen to write a melody like the top or bottom melodies, your TA will probably make you do it again. It's best to follow the guidelines and write a flowing melody the first time. Here are the take-home messages in this video. We learned that species counterpoint models flowing lines that are the basis for tonal music. Lines that flow are smooth, varied, and have directed motion. These lines include elements like passing and neighbor motion and arpeggiation. Following the guidelines for flowing lines will lead to more musical counterpoint and to your success in upcoming exercises with more difficult species. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.